Welcome to this Master Thesis Defense Seminar at Lund University's Department of Sociology. We're going to show you today both how to defend your Master Thesis and how to act as an opponent within a thesis defense. The example we'll be using is Tolia Jack's Master Thesis entitled, Nobody Was Dirty, Disrupting Inconspicuous Consumption in Laundry Routines. Normally, the first word in the defense will go to the author, who will have a chance to mention any omissions or printing errors that came out in the latest version of the text. Then we will hand it to our opponent, Henrietta Eshold, who will start with a summary of the thesis, followed by specific questions. Then there will be a discussion that will go back and forth between the opponent and the author. This is an example of a thesis defense conducted in the right way. So, I don't have too much to add before we get started. There's a spelling error on page 7 and another couple on 14 and 21 and a few of the page numbers dropped from my references but I've taken note of this and it will be updated in the final printed copy. Overall I was pretty happy with how it turned out and I'm really looking forward to hearing your questions and comments. I've read your thesis and prepared my evaluation of it. Um, firstly, I will shortly summarize the thesis uh, then I'll go through it and um, then I'll give my feedback on the strengths and weaknesses. Then you will have the opportunity to respond to my comments. Um, I'll follow the structure of the thesis starting with aims, methods, um, discussion and conclusion and finally I'll comment on the entire thesis and its applicability to sociological knowledge. Sounds fantastic. You investigate why we were so much using mixed methods. Uh, surveys and action-based research. You draw on social practice theory to interpret your data and show ways that your findings relate to broader sociological understandings of the world. I found it easy to relate to your questions and you actually made me think about how much I was my own genes. Did I miss anything? Mm, no, that was a great summary, thank you. Okay, let's begin. Your aim was to discover ways of reducing resource intensity in everyday life. More specifically, you were interested in ways that collective conventions shape social practices looking at laundering. Yeah, that was my final aim. Were you clear about this aim from the beginning or did it develop the further you got into the research? Well, actually, when I started, I was more interested in sustainable fashion. But the further I got into the reading, the more I realized that the biggest environmental impact was in the use phase, how we wash and care for our clothes. So that then I became more interested in use phase and of course people and the social meaning around cleanliness. To address your aim, you have chosen a mixed method um, approach. You have gathered data through um, surveys, interviews, action research and autoethnography. Could you reflect on how you found these methods work together? I wanted to explore my research question from as many angles as possible and to do this I started with a survey to give a base kind of description of what was actually going on and then on that I wanted to get a little bit deeper and find out more about the meanings and understandings around cleanliness and that's where the interviews and the autoethnography came in. I did end up with quite a lot of data but I was able to organise it somewhat using Envivo software analysis and that helped me also to kind of identify some of the different commonalities. But why haven't you more actively incorporated your own experiences of wearing the genes in your analysis and make yourself an object of investigation, observation and reflection? That's a great point. Um, I did keep a diary when I was doing the study which I incorporated into my Invivo database. Um, but you're right, I could have made that a lot more active in the discussion section. And how did you develop your questionnaire? To start off with, I looked at the Government Bureau of Statistics to find out what kinds of questions they were asking in similar research areas. And then from those questions, I developed some of my own to answer my own questions. I tested those questions on 10 of my classmates and then I actually had to clarify them a little bit so they were easier to answer. And after that, I was ready to get going. Okay then, when you went uh, to analyze the data, why did you stop at univariate 
analysis, couldn't further statistical analysis have helped you to explore your question? Um, for example, um, it could have been interesting to compare the question, uh, how often do you wash your jeans, with the question, how important is sustainability to you? Yeah, that would have been super interesting. And I would have loved to do further statistical analysis given more time. And I guess at the same time, if I had have focused more on the quantitative data, I might have ended up in a whole new direction with a different thesis. As it is, the quantitative part lays the foundation for the further, deeper, qualitative investigation, which is more pertinent to the kinds of questions I ended up asking. Your thesis is quite empirical. Do you think a more deeply developed theory section uh, could have helped to improve the applicability of what you've written? Absolutely. That's something I wish I'd spent much more time on instead of focusing so much on the empirics. But you did relate your findings to social practice theory using Bourdieu and Giddens. Um, how did you find your results fitted in with this framing? When I first started writing my discussion section, I found it really hard to find any patterns and it was a little bit all over the place. But after then going back to the theory and looking at my data with a lens of social practice theory, I found it much easier to identify patterns. Instead of looking at individuals, I looked at objects like jeans, washing machines and powders, skills, knowing when and how to wash, and social understandings like wanting to fit in and not wanting to offend colleagues, um, social pressures became much more obvious and I found it easier to identify ideas of, of what was normal and where they came from. Moving forward to your analysis section, you find that people are washing because of social pressure rather than physical needs and start exploring this idea of collective conventions. What do you mean by that? In my interview, one thing I heard over and over again was that people weren't washing because of physical things like dirt or smell, but rather some underlying feeling that they should. People were actually washing quite a lot without being able to explain exactly how this added any benefit to their life. That made me think that there was some common denominator, some shared understanding about what people should do that had quite a lot of agency in what people did do. Interesting. Thank you. I've also made some small suggestions with the grammar and formatting, which I'll email to you. Overall, I found the flow um, logical and um, your thesis was w well written and engaging to read. Um, did you have any specific questions? Mm, no, you've given me plenty to think about. Thank you. Thank you and all the best with your final edits. We've just enjoyed a Master Thesis Defense Seminar at Lund University's Department of Sociology. Our opponent has just gone through the different parts of the thesis, highlighting their strengths and weaknesses. Our author responded to the opponent's questions and highlighted her own view of the thesis. At this point, we would normally pass the discussion on to the audience, giving them a chance to ask questions. In this very positive example, the opponent asked her questions in a way that was very structured and diplomatic, and she provided us with the context which showed us how answering those questions could improve this thesis. She also listened to the author's responses. The author showed us her very specific scientific reasoning behind her research choices. Her responses to the opponent were reflective, communicative, without being defensive. What we've seen was a professional discussion that was content-focused and helped everyone understand the scientific reasoning behind the thesis. In this second example, we're going to show you a master thesis seminar conducted in a less ideal way. I don't have really anything to add before we get started. I've read it a couple of times and I'm pretty sure there are no mistakes. I was pretty happy with how it turned out, so yeah. Well, I've read your thesis and um, it was interesting reading. Um, you did some interviews and some surveys also, I think. Um, you engaged people in wearing the same pair of jeans for three months. Um, and then you um, tried to link your empirical material to uh, textbooks from our classes. Um, that seems nice and it's probably valid because we took this sociology course together. Your conclusion is that uh, people wash their jeans too much and shouldn't wash their jeans? Or is it? 
Yeah, pretty much. On the other hand, I thought it was a little all over the place. Um, some parts didn't make any sense at all. And you used a lot of really complicated concepts. Really? Yeah, like social practice theory. Yeah, I was also a little bit confused by that. My professor thought it was a good idea. They actually thought I should read a book by Amanda Giddens, but it was out at the library, so I got one by her, bro her brother Anthony. Okay, but what about this idea of structuration of social practices governing resource consumption? What do you mean by that? Um, which page is that on? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I guess that Giddens uh, he wrote about sustainability and he is a sociologist, right? And plus, I reference with a page number. So that's totally okay, right? And then on page uh, 23, uh, when you analyzed your surveys, uh, why did you only use univariate analysis? What do you mean by univariate analysis? Didn't you take a course on quantitative methods? I mean, why didn't you control for factors like age and gender? Oh, yeah, I took quantitative methods, but I didn't really get how to use SPSS. Um, I used YouTube videos to make those graphs. But didn't you discuss how the methods interacted with each other? Mm, not really. I didn't think it was that important. And what was your aim with your study? Oh, well, I was pretty much trying to make fashion more sustainable, but I changed my mind the week before. And in the end, it says here on page 34 that I tried to understand everyday life and collective conventions. Okay, um, that wasn't so clear from what I read. Um, also, I couldn't really understand how you collected the data. Um, you didn't have any methods section, or did you? No. I thought we could just talk about that here because I did so much work I thought it would take ages to write about. So I did 256 interviews and then I transcribed them but actually I recorded them first and transcribed them afterwards and then I put them into Envivo uh, but then I also uh, did interviews. Yeah that's what I meant that I transcribed. I transcribed 31 interviews but then I did 256 surveys and I also wore my jeans myself and then I put all of that into Envivo, but also this other Facebook group thing. And I did some web articles as well. Have you guys heard about Envivo? It's like this great data analysis software. Um, so that was that, but I've got a feeling I forgot something. Okay, that's quite a lot of data to put together. Um, how did you find any coherence? Well, I just went with my gut feeling. But how did you show how your discussion relates to the data? Well, actually, I used grounded theory. So that means you can just go in and make some observations on the ground and then theorize about them. And that's what I did. OK, I think maybe we have different views on grounded theory. Um, so what can we learn from your study? Well, we wash too much and nothing bad happens if we don't wash. Being clean is just a social construct. Yeah, I guess so. Um, uh, you're also a bit messy with your formatting. Um, the font you used was too fancy and you kept uh, changing reference style. Um, look at this page, um, 64 here. You have two different uh, fonts. Um, it, seem, it just seems like you have, um, you, you cut and pasted from somewhere else. Uh, okay, I'll fix it. It doesn't really make a difference. Okay, okay, but, but actually it was, uh, it was really good. It was a um, really uh, nice reading and um, yeah, good, good job. Thank you. This example shows how a master thesis defense seminar should not be conducted. There was no clear structure in the questioning. We did not get a clear idea of what the thesis was about. And the focus was more on trivial details than on important content. The tone was sometimes too aggressive and at other times it was superficially positive and again not content focused. The language 
of both the opponent and the author could have been more professional. The author in her answers was vague and uninterested, and she could not clarify some key ideas in her master thesis. She sometimes relied on appeals to authority, such as, my supervisor told me so, instead of explaining her scientific reasoning. We hope that this video helps you prepare for your master thesis defense seminar. Good luck to you.